There was a time when I could go to any extent just to get laid. Yeah, I was a completely stupid dude with no self-respect, with a ginormous amount of desperation. My hopeless nature was beyond repair until I stumbled on a big rock named Life Lessons. I met this girl on Facebook who recently moved from New Jersey. We talked for hours into the next few days and soon decided to meet. I have been to dates where I barely knew the girl, so it wasn't my first time going out with a total stranger. She said there is a Starbucks near the highway, which is always less crowded. Realizing she wants privacy, I was quite sure that I will get lucky that night. I agreed, and we planned to meet for a coffee date on a Wednesday evening. I tossed on a fresh t-shirt and sprayed so much deodorant that my cat whined in irritation and ran away from my room. I just wanted to create a good impression, that's all. I reached the Starbucks around 7 o'clock, and as I entered, I understood Wendy was right. There was no one at the coffee shop. Being located on the isolated highway, it hardly attracted customers on weekdays. A woman in her late 40s was sitting behind the counter wearing the Starbucks employee costume. She was wearing so much makeup, which made her look kind of freaky. Her red lips were so blood red that when she smiled at me, I felt awkward. I smiled back at her, not having any other option, and sat down at the table in the corner. I wanted to text Wendy and ask how long she was going to take, but then I thought it would sound very desperate, so I patiently waited. I was scrolling down my Facebook feed when the woman behind the counter walked up to me. The woman was wearing a pair of blue jeans with a black t-shirt over which she had a Starbucks green apron on. Can I get something for you, darling? Being addressed by darling, by a woman who was probably about my mom's age, I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. I collected my awkward self and replied, No thanks, I'm just waiting for my date. Well, seems like she's late. I'll be at the counter in case you need some company. <laughs> Saying this, she started to walk back while swinging her hips in a very flirtatious manner. I smelled my t-shirt, thinking I might have sprayed too much perfume to attract such unexpected attention. For the next few seconds, I could feel this woman watching me and smiling back at me whenever our eyes met. When 15 minutes went by and there was no sign of Wendy, I decided to head home. I was getting ready to get up when Wendy stormed inside the Starbucks like a bolt of lightning. She was a bit overweight than she looked in her pictures. I might be a jerk, but I had enough decency not to judge a person on her appearance. Honestly, she looked cute to me, so I smiled and waved at her. Wendy smiled too and came to sit with me. Sorry, I got into car trouble. How long have you been waiting? Not long. I just came in. I lied to make her feel comfortable. I was happy that now the woman behind the counter will stop bugging me. Wendy and I exchanged basic greetings, and I asked her if she would like something to eat. I didn't want to tell her to go and give the order, as it would have seemed very rude on a first date, so I got up to walk to the counter. I was completely cringing with the fact that I have to face this weird woman again. Um, excuse me. You are always excused, my darling. So what can I do for you? Uh, we would like two tall caramel java chip frappuccino with one pumpkin cream cheese muffin and one blueberry muffin. She took my order while giving me a cold look for not receiving any reciprocation from me. I stood there as she made the bills, when all of a sudden, she asked me an out-of-the-line question. What do you see in that girl? Sorry? I said, what the hell do you see in that girl? That's none of your business. I just don't get men these days. You guys are so frustrating. Saying this, she slammed the bill on the counter and went inside the room behind the counter. I came back with a totally confused mind, and Wendy asked me if everything was all right. I didn't want to drag her into it all, so I lied again and said everything is fine. As we waited for the order, Wendy went on talking about herself. One thing I noticed was that she was fond of her mother. I liked her caring nature, and so far... The date was going well when I heard footsteps coming at us. The woman came with our order and put it on the table without saying a single word. I ignored her for good and invested all my attention in Wendy. But the woman didn't leave the table. She stood there, and surprisingly, Wendy seemed completely fine about that. I looked up at the woman and said, Why can't you just leave us alone? Hey, don't talk to her like that. 
I know how it looks, Wendy, but she is bugging me from the moment I stepped in. I didn't tell you all this time because... Mom, did you freak him out? Mom? Look, Matt, we like you. I mean, you're the first guy who's managed to impress both me and my mom. It's very important to us that we both like the guy, you know? So maybe we can go home now and the three of us can enjoy the night. What do you say? I was completely shocked hearing the words coming out of Wendy. This lady is her mom and they both want to date the same guy? I realized I have stepped into some unknown trouble and there was no one else to get me out of that. This sick mother-in-law duo was planning to do God knows what with me and I didn't even see that coming. So this is why she asked me to meet her at this deserted Starbucks where we will not be interrupted. I'll kiss this pumpkin first, then you can go ahead, Wendy. <laughs> what? No way. I was the one he came to this date for. I'm your mom. I'll decide what to do with this sweet candy bar. <laughs> Enough! I have put up with your crap for a long time. Leave my boyfriend alone. Your boyfriend? Look at yourself. You're nothing but a fat, ugly girl who no one wants to sleep with. Now get lost. I have unfinished business with this guy. You bitch! Saying this, Wendy picked up the hot coffee and splashed it on her mom's face. The woman screamed in terrible pain as the coffee burned her skin like grilled chicken. Soon their feud turns into a big fight and they started hitting each other like a pair of crazy psychopaths. Wendy's mom punched her in the face and then shoved her fingers into her eyes until she bled from her eyeballs. He is mine! Don't try to outsmart your own mother! You're a piece of shit and you've ruined me! Wendy's mom sat on her and kept piercing her sharp nails inside Wendy's eyes while saying the most bizarre thing one mother can say to her daughter. Not being able to take this anymore, Wendy grabbed her mom's hair and pulled out a huge chunk, tearing a patch of bloody skin from her skull. I was completely shocked to see them react this way and for a few minutes didn't know what to do. They were fighting like wild animals with no mercy whatsoever. As the woman collapsed on the ground holding her head, Wendy got up and grabbed the chair from the table. She then started to bash her mom's brains out while screaming, He is mine and I'm not fat. I'm not ugly. You are ugly. You are ugly. Just die, you freak. She beat her mom to death right in front of my eyes and I was dumbstruck to move or act. When she was done, her entire face was smeared in blood. There was blood in her hands as well. She then turns toward me and said, Finally. Now, we can have our date in peace. She will never disturb us again. <laughs> I called the cops, and until they came, Wendy just kept laughing and repeating these lines. She will never disturb us again. I'm free now. <laughs> when the cops took her away, she turned at me for one last time and blew me a kiss, saying, I'll see you soon, my love. We won't be disturbed then. I have left my old address and moved to a new block. I've blocked her from my Facebook and hope I never get to see her again. I don't know if I will ever be able to trust another girl again. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. The story I'm about to tell is 100% true. I just hope to share this so it will caution other people. I was 19 when this incident happened. My parents lived in Ohio and I was flying home to stay with them for a while. Being short on cash, I had to take the cheapest flight that was scheduled late night. Many flights got delayed that night. I was watching the runway getting drenched in rain when someone spoke from behind. Do you have a lighter? I turned around and saw an old, chubby man standing beside me. He had an uneven, roughly grown beard and a pointy nose that could poke your eye out from a mild distance. Seeing me staring at him cluelessly, he snapped his fingers at my face and asked the same question once again. Hey, do you have a lighter? Um, no, sorry, I don't smoke. What happened to the world these days? When I was your age, 
I used to smoke two packs a day. Such a waste of your lungs. Shouldn't you be discouraging young people from smoking as an adult? <laughs> well, I am the cool one. That's rare to find. As he talked, I couldn't help but study him from top to bottom. He was wearing an expensive suit and had a gold watch on his left wrist that was shining every time he moved his hand. His teeth were very bad, which justified he wasn't lying about the smoking habit earlier. He asked me where I was heading and some basic questions. I didn't share too much because I'm pretty reserved by nature. Even though he realized I wasn't interested in him, he stood there and watched me. I just ignored him and came back to my seat. There was a hell of a lot of time for boarding and I didn't want to fall asleep. Thinking a coffee would be a good idea to remain awake, I took my backpack and decided to head to the Starbucks outlet at the end of the premises. There was a female employee at the counter. I ordered a cappuccino and two choco chip cookies. I sat at a table in the corner, and at that point, I was the only one in the Starbucks. I was scrolling through my phone when I heard a familiar voice again. So you drink coffee, huh? Looking up, I met with that old dude again. Generally, I am a polite person. But if irritated, I can turn into Hulk really quickly. A rush of anger pierced my brain as soon as he spoke to me. Surprisingly, he didn't even care to intervene shamelessly and sat right next to me at my table. I could have a coffee with you then. Whatever you have ordered will be paid. So don't worry. There's a lot of time for our flights. So why don't we hang out and get to know each other? I enjoy the company of a young mind very much. I was stunned to see his audacity. He was going on even though I wasn't replying to him. Finally, when I couldn't take it anymore, I unleashed my demons. Look, old man, I can pay for my food, so why don't you just fuck off and mind your own business? Do whatever other old people do your age. Sit somewhere quiet and wait for death. I see. Is this how your parents taught you? No, they taught me how to punch an obnoxious guy like you in the nuts. Do you want that? This is not how you should behave when someone's trying to be nice to you. Dude, just fuck off. Leave me alone. Hearing me scream at him, he got up and left my table. But he didn't leave the Starbucks. Instead, he went to the counter and ordered himself up a cup of coffee. Then he sat at the same exact opposite table of mine. I was beyond annoyed to see his impudent behavior. But now I couldn't say anything. I calmed myself down and waited for my coffee to arrive. The man sat there and kept watching my every single move with a freaky face. I could see burning anger in his eyes after I insulted him, but I didn't give a damn anymore. A few seconds later, my order got served and I was about to take a sip of my coffee when the man started to pull off a disgusting stunt. He smiled at me, flashing his yellow teeth, then picked up a napkin from the table. He unfolded the napkin and placed it on the table. Then. He inserted his fingers into his big nostrils and started to pull out his dirty nose hair. Each hair he pulled out, he placed it with the utmost care on his napkin and then smiled at me like filthy vermin. He was deriving pleasure from my discomfort and I also couldn't walk out of the coffee shop. I knew that's what he wants me to do and if I walk out, it will signify that he won. I'm very adamant when it comes to my dignity and self-respect. So I kept sitting there while this freak went on preserving his nose hair on the napkin. I stopped looking at him. After a while, I felt the urge to pee, but I wasn't done with my coffee. The airport was completely stranded by then, and the girl behind the Starbucks counter was also dozing off at her late night shift. I couldn't hold back anymore. But also, I didn't want to leave my luggage unattended because I was sure this man will steal my things or even go through my luggage if he had the chance. I walked up to the Starbucks employee and told her to watch over my table till I come back from the washroom. I then rushed to the washroom to quickly do my business. When I came back, the man was still sitting there and sipping his coffee. He turned his face from me with a don't care attitude and I felt relieved that finally this weirdo was getting off my back. I sat down and grabbed my coffee cup to take a few more sips and then go back to the waiting area. I chomped on the last piece of my cookie and swiftly drank my cappuccino when I felt something on my tongue. It didn't taste like content belonging to a coffee, rather it felt 
stringy. I quickly let out whatever was in my mouth to my napkin. It was tiny strands of thick hair, which looked similar to pubic hairs. But then I realized what they were, and as soon as I did, I started vomiting on the floor of Starbucks. The girl at the counter came running, seeing me let out my stomach like this, and small chaos took place. Security came too, and at the corner of my eyes, I watched that evil man smiling like a dirty dog. When I went to the washroom, he slipped his nose hairs into my coffee, taking advantage of the drowsy employee of Starbucks. I got so sick that I couldn't even tell security what exactly was wrong with me. They escorted me out of the airport and then called the paramedics. I was fine after an hour, but for almost a year, I couldn't drink any hot beverage. Every time I looked at a cup of coffee, it reminded me how I almost drank someone's nose hair at Starbucks. I never saw that man again, but wherever he is, I wish he dies a horrific death and maggots eat him alive. Burn in hell, you freak! My girlfriend and I used to love visiting the Starbucks around the block from our house. We had just moved in together after four years of dating, and I was even thinking about asking her to marry me. She had just graduated college with a medical degree, and I was busy working on my own company. But with our busy schedule, having some time to have breakfast together was the highlight of our day. One day, the Starbucks we used to go to every day shut down. We showed up, and it was completely closed. There was police tape around the store's front, and many officers were at the scene. I walked up to the nearest cop and asked what was happening. Sorry, kid. This is an active crime scene. You can't come through. A crime scene? Oh my god, we come here all the time. What happened? I can't say. Move along, please. The cop looked disgusted, like he had seen something awful. Okay, Stacy, let's go, I said to my girlfriend. We went for a walk instead, and we ended up at a different Starbucks, six blocks away from our usual location, but close to the train station. We sat down, and she took out her phone. Here, check it out. Apparently, they found a girl dead inside the cafe. She had disappeared two weeks ago, and now they found her body held by a metal rod, standing behind the countertop and dressed as one of the baristas. God, that's grisly. Apparently, that's the third girl in six months, all of them found at different Starbucks across the state. There was a tinge of excitement in Stacy's voice. One of the odd things about her was that she's a true crime fan. She follows real stories and is fascinated by serial killers. I was terribly uncomfortable with the whole thing. One of the baristas called our names, so I went to get our drinks. When I was making my way back to our seats, I saw something that kind of freaked me out. A man, in his fifties, with a scraggly beard and dirty clothes, was standing outside the cafe looking through the window, looking at Stacy. When he noticed me, he quickly ran away. After a while, Stacy and I went our separate ways. She had rounds at the hospital, and I had to go to the office. When I came home that evening, she wasn't there. I waited up until late at night. No signs of her. I started calling her and didn't get a response. I called the cops, but they don't start looking for a missing person until 24 hours after their disappearance. Luckily, I have my phone set to track hers, so I found the signal. She was 20 miles outside the city. I grabbed my knife, got to my bike, and rode to the dot on the map. When I got to the place, it was a cabin in the middle of nowhere. I had turned off my bike to approach the place quietly. Be quiet! Be quiet or I'll kill you! I could hear the shouting from a distance, and I could hear what sounded like the muffled voice of a woman. That had to be Stacy. I approached the cabin and stood next to the door. No! I said shut up! That was her. I kicked down the door. I had my knife drawn. Get away from her! He turned and faced me. He was unarmed, but I realized then that he was bigger than me. He rushed me, but I dodged him and tripped him with my leg. He fell face down on the floor. So before he could get up, I ran to Stacy, cutting the duct tape that kept her tied to the chair. Oh my god, Jack. Quick, let's go. The man was getting up and now was covering the door, our only exit. There was an oil lamp next to the door frame. He ran at me trying to grab it, but this time 
When I dodged, I sliced upward, catching his face. I hurt him badly, and when he fell backwards grabbing his face, Stacy and I made it to the door. We were about to escape. She stopped for a second and grabbed the lamp. She smashed it against the floor. The cabin, which was made of wood, started to catch fire. We had to get out. We made it to the woods when we heard the man yell, Patricia! They're running away! The forest was suddenly illuminated by the headlights of a truck flashing straight at us. We heard a woman's voice screaming, Oh, get back here, piggies! Shots were fired from the truck. One of them nearly hit me, but Stacy and I were moving so fast that they lost track of us in the woods. I was trying to find my bike. We heard gunshots, and the bullets were hitting trees close to us. The woman, Patricia, was hunting us down. Lucky for us, she had a flashlight on her, which allowed me to see her location in the darkness of the forest. She was far enough for us to escape, so we got on the bike, and I accelerated as fast as possible, leaving the burning cabin behind. Oh, you son of a... We lost her, and we drove all the way to the police station. The following day, the cops gave us a call. So it turns out the man who kidnapped your girlfriend, sir, it was the Starbucks killer and his wife. Their names are Henry and Patricia Adams. We checked a different property they had under the man's name, and we found pictures of him with all the missing girls. You just saved your girl from being another victim. I hung up a while later and explained everything to Stacy. Apparently, when they found him, he had bled out, but his wife is still out there. Don't worry, they'll catch her. Thank God. Can we go stay at a hotel somewhere else? We were unarmed, and the psychos probably knew where we lived. So I agreed. We left that afternoon. I got the weird feeling that someone was following us. When we got to the hotel and we were given the keys to our room, we felt safer. That was until we were woken up in the middle of the night. Something had smashed against the floor. You thought you had escaped, huh? The woman was standing there. She looked younger than her picture suggested, and she was wearing a green apron, like the ones the baristas use at Starbucks. What do you want? I shouted. Stacy was next to me, grabbing my arm, terrified. I want her to step out of the bed. That's right, love. Stand over there. Stacy did not move, so Patricia ran at her side, pulled her by her hair, and dragged her away. I got out of bed and went to get my knife from the drawer, but Patricia yelled out, You burned my house! That's when she shot me in the leg. I fell to the floor. I could not move. At that moment, however, Stacy elbowed her in the face. I had never expected something like that from my girl. While Patricia grabbed her face, bleeding from her nose, Stacy jumped over the bed and took cover next to me. Then she went to the drawer and gave me the knife. When Patricia got up, we were gone. We were running down the hallway, and when we made it to the front desk, we called the police. They came and helped us. That night, we ended up at the police station. It turns out, these two had been stalking Stacy for weeks. They knew everything about us. Where we lived, worked, everything. They tell us they arrested the man who was still at the cabin when the police arrived. But the woman had escaped. They couldn't find her even after what happened at the hotel. I'd love to go out to have coffee in the mornings with Stacy, who is now my wife. But we've become more scared of the outside world. You never know what's out there. For now, we'll be having our breakfast at home.